A very good day to all our viewers out there. My name is Dr. Nisi Tusi from Ashes to Beauty, A to B. We are still on our community development. Today, I've got special people. According to Sakwa, they call them level 10, the last level. There is no other way you can go anywhere after that last level. They are here. These are the people that train our kids at the higher level to change their mind, to behave, and to be ready for the future. Ladies, can you please tell our viewers at home who you are and where you come from? Mm. Viewers at home, my name is Dr. Selina Siganga. I come from Johannesburg. I'm here to share my experience with you. Viewers at home, my name is Benevolent Dumakhole, Dr. Benevolent Dumakhole. I need to get used to the title. <laughs> Dr. Benevolent Dumakhole. I come from Pretoria and I'm here to share my experience with you. We was at home, I am Dr. Delta Kapani. Um, I come from Johannesburg and I look forward to sharing this moment with you. Wow, I'm sitting here with the doctors. Please tell us, how did it become that you become a doctor? Which level, what do you study and how do you become a doctor? Uh, it's a, it's a journey, to be honest, Dr. Mm. Nisi. Um, when I, I, I started in a corporate world, I, I entered as, at, an, at an entry level as a sales manager, which was very low. Um, but I had this, this desire mm. to become a doctor one day. Yes. I knew that I have to become a doctor. Mm. So I persuaded and, st and, and wanted to further my studies. And I approached my, 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 my seniors at work mm. and asked them if they can support me. So there was a sponsorship, but you had to like take it as a loan. They deduct it from you. Mm. Once you have qualified that qualification, you've submitted, then they pay you back. So it was quite a journey for years. Mm. So while I was a, a sales manager, I, I was always admitted that um, Vets Business School at a new management level, new management program. Mm -hmm. Then from there, where I, after graduation, I was um, I applied again for yeah. a, 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 an advanced program mm -hmm. again, management program. Then from there, I went to a University of Johannesburg. It was now a postgraduate diploma for advanced banking law because I was still with the bank. Then I moved from there to an MBA. So it mm. was quite a long journey. So it needs persistence, mm. it needs courage. From MBA, you're skipping it. I want this last part. From MBA, where did you go? So <laughs> from MBA, I've immediately after graduation, before even I graduated, they just released the results. Then I applied at Logos, uh, Logos mm. University in uh, Florida, Jacksonville. Yeah. So uh, then I took my journey as, as a PhD. PhD. Dr. Penny. Well, with me, um, it was also a journey, um, mm -hmm. but a very exciting one yeah. because um, when I started with uh, my career um, at the university, I knew because I never rested. I did my diploma and then I continued. I, continued. I did my BSc at Medunza, then I did my master's at, at Rao University. Then I jumped in when I had about, actually before that, then I wanted to become a doctor. Wow. For me, it was more becoming a doctor of medical doctor than being a PhD student. Wow. So I went overseas uh, to Russia, then I studied medicine, but unfortunately mm. I did not finish. Uh, because of family problems, I had to come back home. So when I was at home, I was sitting myself and I was like, look, my friends will be completing their medicine and I'm sitting at home doing nothing. And I met Professor Libis. The person, no, 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 come, 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 come. Wow. Are you interested? I said yes, and then I got on board. And, wow. and it was quite a journey. At least it has fulfilled me wow. because it was something I wanted to study medicine to be a doctor, a medical doctor. But God took to me to another turn, so I yes. had to accept and be ready to to do my PhD. Wonderful. So it was quite, it was quite a, a, a very interesting journey. It is indeed, yes. Doctor Dale. Talk to us. Thank you, Dr. Nisi. Um, I think I concur with my fellow doctors. It certainly is a journey. 
Um, I would actually go as far as saying it's a journey of testing character. Yeah. Because it's really not an easy journey. Mm -hmm. um, and we sit here today, um, you know, beautiful in our regalia. But I think the fellow colleagues here will agree that it takes a unique uh, person to achieve this because it's really not just about intellect it's mm. also about resilience mm -hmm. so the ability to hold those two together in that complexity is very unique so traditionally there are various qualifications that you would go through mm -hmm. and i'm not going to mention them because i think the fellow doctors have touched on some of them but for me, it was interesting because I had never actually set a goal or a dream to become a doctor. Wow. It was not yeah. within my radar. Um, I did, however, find myself in a wealth bank, one of the top four in South Africa, mm. where I had been called to come and solve a problem. Um, the bank was, sh was showing various things, um, high turnover, fraud, risk, no innovation, no leadership, there were a number of issues. You have touched on a very important thing. As we said, if at the higher level of education you are learning, getting prepared of the future, then you get to exactly where you were at the bank. Now you are expected to solve problems. Yes. Were you given the right qualifications yes. to do that? So as I solve the problem, mm. I become nominated for a master's program. Oh. Um, and as I do my master's and I finish in my um, application for the thesis, I actually got invited into the PhD based on the solution that I was giving in the bank okay. and the results that were coming out of it. So it found me and I suppose I was meant to end up here and it's been a phenomenal journey. So what PhD is, so that means once you have a PhD, you must have solution for our country. Okay. Our country is yes. sick, such. Let's, let's talk about that area. What is it that you can do, or the qualifications that you have can do to assist our country to be a better place to live in? Well, um, I think if we look at um, all areas of a country, mm. yes, the political frame, the economical frame, the leadership frame, yeah. the education frame, the health frame, various aspects which make a country to become a healthy country lend themselves to solutioning from mm. a PhD perspective. Yeah. And this is the gift and the contribution that makes uh, PhD so unique mm. because at PhD you are actually bringing solutions yeah. you it's not a qualification you are actually bringing a solution mm. it's not a certificate that is going to be sitting there mm. it is something that can be used by others that can be cited by others that can be learned from by others and you should really have something that anybody can go to and say if I'm looking for a solution mm. with regards to leadership who do I reference? Who do I refer to? Who are those that have gone before me to find the solutions? Mm. And if your area is amongst the one that they're looking for in this example, leadership, you should be found amongst those mm -hmm. because you would have implemented a solution practically in an organization, in an institution that actually solved for a problem. Dr. Selena, I know you are helping our young ones, SMME, entrepreneurs. Take us through that. Um, I actually specialize in enterprise development, mm -hmm. uh, helping bigger organizations mm. to in the in their C, I, CSI mm. spending. Uh, therefore, you would come in as a consultant and develop those entrepreneurs that they are developing. The other aspect um, I lecture specifically on entrepreneurship and strategy. Right. Uh, what, what happens is what I realize is that as you teach in class, mm. theory and application of theory are two different worlds. Of course, there's always a gap and in most, the two. Most yeah. universities are actually uh, giving theory. Mm -hmm. There's no application of theory. So through my experience in the banking sector, uh, the experience helps. Mm -hmm. 
experience it's an added advantage wow. when you now teach remember i did mba mm -hmm. which made me an all-rounder a general practitioner mm -hmm. in business yes. then i specialized in leadership Mm. Now, leadership is actually an application of that theory. Mm. Mm. So when I teach now as a lecturer, mm. I, 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 I am developing a leader here yes. who is an entrepreneur. Mm. Now taking him into a journey of starting his own business. Mm. And now how to start it, how to manage it, yes. how to make it sustainable. Sustainable, of course. And that takes an experienced mm. person. Mm. Now who has walked that journey? applied this theory practically in a corporate world mm. now when you imparting it okay. now you impart the knowledge and the experience mm -hmm. so it's a double barrel okay. kind of yeah. thing yes. All right. so i've realized there is a gap mm. in our tertiary schools mm -hmm. we're only giving theory there's no application right. and our students can graduate i call them certificated because mm -hmm. even the corporate world is looking for people who have got experience. Mm -hmm. They normally say he's graduated, but he has no experience. Mm -hmm. So in that class, if 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 if, uh, if educators mm -hmm. can learn to give even application of theory mm -hmm. in all levels, mm -hmm. then we'll produce people who are ready for the corporate world. Yes, That's where the gap is. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. Dr. Penny. Wow. Well, with me, um, my or um, it's in environmental management. All right. But now my focus is in environmental health. I love environmental health so much mm -hmm. because I studied as an environmental health practitioner. So now I'm also lecturing at, at one of the university students who are doing BTEC environmental health. And we have realized now with the issue of COVID-19, we have seen a lot of interesting things coming out. As an environmentalist, what do you do? As an environmental health practitioner, what do you do? So our 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 our, our, our profession has now been known. I don't know if you guys you know what the health inspectors are doing. Mm -hmm. We're not sure. You know, <laughs> you might not be sure. You're yeah. looking at people who are going to the shops and 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 doing inspections and doing this and that. But there's so much that we're doing now with with this epidemic we are trying to solve a problem. Mm. When we hear that somebody has been confirmed uh, 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 COVID-19 positive, yeah. obviously there are measures that need to be taken into place. A person mm. needs to be isolated, uh, uh, the place needs to be sanitized, and, and, and in a building, in a work environment, the health inspector needs to come in and make sure that the building complies with all the regulations. Is it safe enough for those people to come back and work there? So to, to be able to, to make sure that we do not uh, uh, spread the virus to many other people. So mm -hmm. our duty now is, is, is to make sure that what we do, we do not uh, uh, increase the, or we, we, we delay the spread of the virus and we protect those people who are not affected. Mm -hmm. So even at work as, as it is now, I am on a technical team where we deal, de 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 uh, deal, uh, deal with uh, COVID-19. So those are the issues that are, are, are happening currently and this is our focus at the moment. But also as a lecturer, I lecture environmental health practitioner for them to be able to go out there to do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. I mean, with being an environmental health practitioner now in this era, previously you were just a health inspector who would go with a car, get inside the shops, you know, our more work was more into shops, you go to the clinics, you go to the doctors and all that, but now things have changed. Mm. Now our focus is to make sure that we protect the health of the public. We mm. protect the health of the environment. Mm. So we focus more also on the Bill of Rights, uh, they talk about Section 26 where they say everybody has the right to a clean and healthy environment. So it is my task, it is my duty as a health inspector to make sure that that everybody gets, not only few people who are elite, even the poor of the poorest, they also get what they're supposed to get. Right. Yes. Do you have anything to add on to that, Dr. Selina? Um, I'm not a health specialist, but this is quite interesting. Mm. Uh, my fear is a grandmother. It was that my grandchild goes back to school uh, before they sanitize schools, 
because there was a time when they said they can go back yes. somewhere mm -hmm. in June and I said to my all my children no mm -hmm. no child is going to go back to school yes. but listening to my fellow doctor here um, there is some kind of comfort yes. yeah. if the specialists like her who actually take care mm -hmm. of the safety of, 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 of the public yes. you know um, I'm, I'm, I'm really thrilled and yeah, yeah. Thank you so much yeah. Dr. Dale you can add on to that. We are doing a community development. We need to know what is it that is out there that can assist our community to make sure to make sure that we are all at the same page. If you do not have information, you need information. What is it that you need as a person? You know, Dr. Missy, I have a very practical approach. Mm -hmm. My sense is that learning is accessible to all of us, yeah. everywhere. Okay. We need to start inculcating a culture where we understand that information is all around us. Mm. It requires us to start becoming aware mm. and becoming curious. Question everything. As you pass a billboard, read the, the, the billboard mm. with interest mm. and with intrigue and with curiosity. Mm. As you engage the newspaper, mm. read the newspaper with curiosity, analysis, synthesis. Mm. In other words, what am I saying? I am proposing that for us to move to where we need to move as a country, as a community from a learning perspective, mm. we must shun the thinking that it is only in a formalized classroom. Yes. Um, and you know, Ulrich actually tells us about this. He has a model that says in today's economy, 20% mm. of the learning happens, I mean 10% of the learning happens in the classroom. 20% mm. of the learning happens from the environment. Right. Mm. And the biggest percentage, as you can see, is on social platforms mm. so how are we using our social platforms for self gratification and for fulfilling the ego's need to be seen to to like to be heard mm. or are we using them as platforms to start engaging structures for conversation for engagement for questioning and for actually saying then how do we collaborate to bring forth solutions mm. yes of course formalized learning is also very very key mm -hmm. because it brings in the scientific the measured aspect of of of, of learning yes mm -hmm. um, but if we can learn to start moving the two together in a balanced synchronicity mm -hmm. I think we will start to see more a nation that is becoming more um, educated from an awareness perspective and taking ownership of how to drive the future forward that's how I see it, Dr. Yes, the world has changed. Mm -hmm. We call it virtual classes. We call it e-learning. We call it everything. Dr. Dell has just said it. The chunk of 100% happens on that platform. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about that? Do you listen? Do you read? Start reading so you can find yourself also adding value to your community. Dr. Selina, people are sitting out there and they are looking, they are saying, one day I want to wear that. And one day I also would love to be called a doctor. What or how will you encourage our children out there? Um, I would say it is, it is possible, hmm. viewers. Um, the journey is long. You've got to surround yourself with the right people, hmm. uh, socialize with the right people, People who, who, people who have made it in life, people who will encourage you to go on uh, with your journey. And also understand that um, it is not just a formal qualification that works. Mm. Even shadowing somebody mm. at work yes. and try and do what they do. For instance, if you're executive director and you're an assistant, he's doing proposals, uh, preparation of, of, of reports, try and help and do that. Mm -hmm. I call it shadowing. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. You shadow your boss, you learn what they do. In other words, I normally say as a leader, mm. you ought to develop other leaders around you. Yes. Be able to, uh, to, to, to delegate power. Delegating mm. power is actually taking away pressure from you as a leader. Yeah. Therefore, our young people, they need to be prepared to learn you know, and be, be, be persistent because mm. our young people are not patient. Mm. They want a quick fix kind of a thing. I want to earn so much money and they do not want to be patient in terms of learning mm. from those who've gone ahead of them. So my advice is that wherever you are in your corner, get a mentor, whether it's a formal or informal mentorship, get a mentor. Mm. I mentor people everywhere and I have passion for women especially young people because i want to um replicate myself mm. so i would like to say be encouraged uh, look for information you know my fellow doctors mentioned something about social media and people who are boosting their egos posting wanting to be seen i think if we can turn the technology and use it to our advantage mm. and building our communities building our children out there and become a specialist in your field that shares information and inspirational quotes on a daily basis on that social media platform. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll, we'll touch many. Mm -hmm. That is the approach that I would say we should, our country should be taking now. That's how the, role, the ball is it's rolling. rolling. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Dr. Benny. Yeah, with me, I'm thinking, um, I'm hearing uh, the, uh, my, my, my colleagues talking and I, I really agree with them but my passion is more into those people who are hating especially children mm -hmm. that have been abused right. and that are losing hope mm -hmm. and I would just like to say to you that you know it is not the end of the world mm -hmm. we understand uh, I mean we've I've gone through the abuse as a child uh, 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 but mine was more into a physical abuse emotional abuse and that thing drove me it's something that made me to be where i am mm. so um, my passion is to say to those that are sitting at home that are feeling that they want to lose hope i want to tell you that no you cannot do that you must continue with what you must be a better person mm. whatever has happened it has happened it's yesterday think about the future think about you think about the tomorrow do not take your life do not kill yourself mm. it's not worth it you don't have to go there. You just have to understand that it is a process. All of us, we go through a process. We go through a, a way where God is, 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 is refining us, mm -hmm. is refining our thinking. Because sometimes we don't know what we want. Mm -hmm. But with all these uh, 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 issues that come before us as a child or as, as a woman sitting at home, you've just decided that, you know what, I want to give up. I don't want to continue with my studies. Do it. It's not for you. With me, what I'm wearing like this, this is not for me. This is for you, to show you that you can be encouraged and be mm -hmm. somewhere in life. Mm -hmm. Not just sitting at home and, and hoping that things will just come whenever you feel like they will come. You, never, you have to work hard. Mm -hmm. The mind. Mm -hmm. The mind is very important. Stop um, negative uh, self-talk. Make sure like that, what the doctor has just said. Every day with a quote, be encouraged, be positive, be, be the person who wants to change the world. Mm. I mean, with me, just a short story uh, that I wish to share with the viewers at home because I feel that they need to know this, they need to understand mm. where am I coming from. As a child, seeing your mom lying there in a pool of blood, what do you do? What do you mm. think about your life? Mm. Do you think that you want to pursue studies, you want mm. to be somewhere? Obviously, those thoughts, they come that you feel like you want to end up your life also. But when I read the scripture, when I open the Bible, God mm. promised me that if I can continue, there will be a reward. If I can mm. continue doing the right things, at the end, there will be a reward. Mm. So I'm saying to you, continue with it. When something bad happens, be able to speak. Go out there and talk to people who will be able to help you. Speak out. I couldn't speak. I kept quiet. I watched. I, I did not know even where to start. But now with the social media, with the social platform, with things that we see, you can be able to go to your teachers, to go anywhere where you feel safe, to be able to report such abuses. Mm -hmm. And 
you can be able to, to, to continue. I mean, we've seen a lot of children, a lot of women who mm. are being uh, who are being murdered. Mm. You know, it's, it's it's not nice, especially in this month of women, where we want to drive uh, uh, to make sure that people are positive, our children are positive. We want to drive home the message that of hope. Mm. I think from all of us here that uh, it's okay. Yes. The process will pass. Mm. This thing, this too shall pass. Mm. You will continue. You'll have a, a better journey. God is preparing us. Mm. So the viewers at home, the children, the young, the youth, everyone, even the men, because the men are also uh, abused. Uh, uh, I'm saying to you, I'm giving a word of encouragement to say, you know what, you can do it. If I did it, you can, you can do, it. do it. Thank you. Dr. Dell, close for us also. Thank you, Dr. Nisi. Um, I think I'd like to close by saying intend to be the best version of yourself mm -hmm. and make every day a process of discovery. Mm -hmm. Be willing to receive the messages as they come for you to refine. Henry Ford, one of the early forefathers of innovation once said, if it is to be, it is up to me. Mm. So, Africa, let's rise. Mm. Our time is now. Wow, well, viewers at home, it was a pleasure having you. I have learned a lot. I have seen leadership pushing us, moving us forward. It was a pleasure having you all, doctors. Thank you. This is Dr. Nisi from Ashes to Beauty. Mm.